I do not remember this momentous occasion as a child. Maybe because I was only five years old, but also because it wasn't a topic that dominated conversation in our home. The early 1980s was dominated by the, ex the, by the escalation of militancy in the North into a full-scale civil war that was to mar the next 30 years. The terrible race riots of 1983 and a bloody communist insurgency amongst the youth was to darken my memories of my childhood and the lives of all Sri Lankans. I recollect now the race riots of 1983 with horror. But for the simple imagination of a child not yet six, it was a time of extended play and fun. I do not say this lightly, as about 35 of our closest friends, all Tamils, took shelter in our home. They needed sanctuary from vicious, politically motivated goon squads, and my father like many other Sri Lankans from different ethnic backgrounds, open their houses at great personal risk. For me, though, it was a time where I had all my friends to play with all day long. The schools were closed, and we played sport for hour after hour in the backyard. Cricket, football, rounders, it was a child's dream come true. I remember getting annoyed when a game would be rudely interrupted by my parents, and we'd all be ushered inside, hidden upstairs with our friends, and ordered to be silent as the goon squads started searching homes in our neighborhood. I did not realize the terrible consequences of my friends being discovered, and my father reminded me the other day of how one day, during that period, I turned to him and in all innocence said, I hope this happens every year because it's so much fun having my friends to play with every day. The JVP-led communist insurgency rising out of our universities was equally horrific in the late 1980s. Schools and universities were closed. People rarely stepped out of their homes in the evenings. The sight of charred bodies on the roadsides and floating corpses in the river was terrifyingly commonplace. People who defied the JVP faced dire consequences. They even urged students of all schools to walk out and march in support of their aims. I was fortunate to be at Trinity College, one of the few schools that defied their dictates. Yet I was living just below Dharmaraja College in Kandy, where the students who walked out of its gates were met with tear gas. And I would see students running down the hill to wash their eyes out with water from a garden tap. My first cricket coach, Mr. D.H. De Silva, a wonderful human being who coached tennis and cricket to students free of charge, was shot on the tennis court by insurgents. Despite being hit in the abdomen twice, he miraculously survived when the gun held to his head jammed. Like many during and after that period, he fled overseas and started a new life in Australia. As the decade progressed, the fighting in the north and east had heightened to a full-scale war. The Sri Lankan government was fighting the terrorist LTTE in a war that would drag our country's development back by decades. This war affected the whole of our land in different ways. Families, usually from the lower economic classes, sacrificed their young women and men by the thousands in the service of Sri Lanka's military. Even Colombo, a commercial capital that seemed far removed from the war's front line was under siege by terrorists using powerful vehicle and suicide bombs. Bombs in public places targeting both civilians and political targets became an accepted risk of daily life in Sri Lanka. Parents traveling to work by bus would split up and travel separately so that if one of them died, the other will return home to tend to the family. Each and every Sri Lankan was touched by the brutality of that conflict. People were disillusioned with politics and power and war. They were fearful of an uncertain future. The cycle of violence seemed unending. And Sri Lanka became famous internationally for its war and conflict. It was a bleak time where we as a nation looked 
for inspiration. A miracle that would lift the pallid gloom and show us what we as a country were capable of, if united as one. A beacon of hope to illuminate the potential of our peoples. That inspiration was to come in 1996.